It's Thursday, February 9th, and this is Geek Nights. Tonight we talk about Legos. Let's do this. Guess who sat through hours and hours of meetings instead of actually doing work today? Guess who sat through hours and hours of not doing work today? I'd rather just be sitting in front of my computer at work doing nothing than uh, sitting in a meeting having to pretend I care about what someone's saying to me. I'd rather be doing something. It was a meeting that didn't really involve me in any way other than the fact that I was there. Then why did you go? Because I had to. They make you go to a meeting that doesn't involve you? Most meetings involve me and I have to go to them and I really do have a reason to be there. This meeting was just kind of pointless, oh my god. Uh, see, I complain about not having to do anything, but I really don't like meetings, and I'm very glad I have a job with no meetings. And I would see, I don't take get people who say they don't like meetings, because I meet with people at work all the time to figure out what we're doing. I mean, meetings are an integral part of what I do. I like doing. You know what I don't like? I don't like stupid meetings. I just don't, I don't like jobs with lots of meetings. Or if I, few well, meetings you're a freaking CS major coder. You just sit there and type all day. I walk around and talk to people is most of my job. I'd like to walk around and talk to people, but I just don't want to have, you know, meetings in quotes. What, what do you mean meetings in quotes? All a meeting is is you talk to people. We have like an appointment. You go to the conference room and you all sit down and you... Bleh, bleh. Well, sometimes you got to talk to more than one person at the same time, so you schedule it. Eh. Most meetings I go to are I sit there with all the people who are working on the same stuff I'm working on and we talk about what we're going to do. I just talk about what we're doing while we're doing it. Yeah, usually we have to plan things out a little bit ahead of time. Someone writes a plan and, and then say, hey, everyone follow this plan. Nah, because it doesn't work that way. Especially the smart in a big person company. makes the plan. No, nah, because they need input from all the experts. I mean, the one person doesn't the know everything about the all the architecture. The expert makes the plan. Uh, there's no expert who knows everything about everything. That's not good. Uh, I'll point out, Scott, that how many thousands and thousands of people work at the place I work. It's not a simple place to manage at all. Yeah, I'm not going to work at any place that big. Uh, I mean, there's benefits. While you don't really stand out in a company like that, you don't really stand out. And I'm fairly convinced that if I just stopped doing work entirely, no one would notice for at least a month. No one's been noticing that I don't do work. No one notices when I do work, so they wouldn't notice if I didn't. And I'm in an office all alone. One person. They only notice when they want something that they haven't assigned me yet, and then they, they decide they need it, and they stop noticing after I give it to them. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, escape work and do something else. All right, let's uh, do that barge idea. We'll have uh, fights to the death on a barge in international waters. And then publish the videos of the fights to the death on the internet and sell them. Not to mention allow rich people to fly out to our helicopter thing, fly out to our helicopter pad on top of the barge and watch the fights. And bet on the fights. And then we kidnap the rich people. Mm, and we keep all their helicopters. Nah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Halo 2 is coming out on the PC. Isn't Halo 2 been out for the Xbox for like a zillion years? I guess. Didn't Halo 1 come out on the PC like just about the same time it came out for the original Xbox? See, the fact that Halo 2 is going to be on the PC is not particularly interesting news. No. The but news... The, the question, why did it take so long is what I'm asking. I don't know. I, I don't know either. Care. I'm, Halo's just, a, I'm just pointing it out. I, I don't want to offend anyone out there, but Halo and Halo 2 are terrible games. Yeah, I mean... I've played both of them. And they're then, good for a console game, as in a console FPS, they're all right. No, they're just GoldenEye with updated graphics, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, which is pretty good for a console game FPS. I guess. But, I it's mean... It's as good as you can do. All the people out there who seem to, like, love Halo 2 never really played the Golden Age FPSs on the computer. Yeah, I used to think it was young punk kids, you know, but my brother, who has played much Counter-Strike and still plays Counter-Strike and whatever... He doesn't like Halo so much. He's like, yeah, Halo crap. It's I've never met anyone who played Quake 2 and all the mods of Quake 2 and played just all, even the modern ones, like Tribes 2, Tribes 1, any of those FPSs, and actually liked Halo. The only people who like Halo seem to be people who have never played a real FPS. People who suck at real FPSs. Nah, no, those people play UT. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, but the news here is that Halo 2 will... Only run in Windows Vista. All right. I'm not sure if this is due to, because they haven't said, if it's going to be due to a technical specific limitation of non-Vista Windows, which seems highly unlikely, unless maybe, you know, DirectX 10 or Considering something. Considering it's an Xbox One game. Or they're just going to put some arbitrary, oh, we've detected you're not running Vista, therefore, no Halo for you. 
So this is just messed up, because first of all, who wants to play Halo 2 on the PC? It's been out on the original Xbox for months and months and months and months and months. And honestly, that's where it shines. You can't really play a game like that with a keyboard and mouse and expect it to be good. Oh, you can, actually. You can play Halo 1 with the keyboard and mouse, and I've done it. The problem is, is you just basically kick the shit out of everything. Yeah, that's the it's problem. It's like it was the easiest thing I ever played. I played the demo. It was so easy. Oh, my God. It really only works when everyone's on equal footing with the uh, handheld controller instead of a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, I, I don't even know why they release it for the PC, but uh, maybe you can play it with the Xbox 360 controller that plugs into the PC. Or maybe Microsoft has an evil, 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 stupid conspiracy plot where they'll put it out on the PC, it'll sell like crap because it's also on Vista, and then they'll just be able to say, yeah, PC gaming's dead. Xbox is the way to go. Uh, no, I think what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to sell copies of Vista by this way, is that people who want Halo 2 for the PC and are ultra super gamers who spend zillion dollars in video cards anyway, putting Halo 2 on the PC for Vista only will make all those people upgrade to Vista. See, they may think that, but honestly, anyone who wants Halo already has an Xbox and is already playing the game as well as they're ever going to play it. Yeah, but... From, uh, the thing that makes me disagree with that is what I heard on the PC Gamer podcast today, which was scary, is they were talking about upgrading PCs, which we've talked about like a thousand times, and he's like, hey, is it worth it for me to upgrade my uh, you know, PC to play this game? And they did some math, which is the same math I would have done, which is price of video card plus price of game divided by hours of gameplay. And they were like, oh, okay, so you play that, if you played that for 125 hours, which is there are very few games I've played for over 125 hours. Maybe like Counter Strike. Uh, I'd submit that Natural Selection is right. Natural up there. Selection, maybe, yeah. Not many is the point. Um, that it would still be about three dollars an hour, and then they said that's a great deal. Now, three dollars an hour. The only thing that costs more than three dollars an hour is playing games in the arcade. That's just insane. Yeah, I mean, even MMOs don't cost you that much. Yeah, I mean, an MMO of 20 bucks a month, if you play an hour a day, that's less than a dollar an hour. You know, so $3 an hour is insane for a game to cost. So, paying, if you add the cost of Vista to the cost of Halo 2 for the PC to the cost of the PC required to run that, and then divide by the number of hours you're going to play games that require all of that, you're not going to it's not going to be good. Yeah, You're an well, idiot. I mean, there's a lot of, not even just the cost of all that, but Windows Vista is in many ways a step backward from current versions of Windows that you can already buy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about it before, but Vista, you can't install drivers unless Microsoft approves them. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, it'll warn you, hey, this driver's unsigned, don't install it. It really won't let you. You don't have root access to your own machine anymore. At least it'll really... Uh bring down PC game cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'll also bring down uh, playing my uh, items of dubious copyright uh, status. Absolutely. I mean, I want to be able to play all my MP3s. I want to be able to download all my DivXs. That's why I run Linux. Or uh, Windows XP behind yeah. a firewall. You know what? Um... Somehow, I don't think Halo 2 for the PC is going to be this giant draw that they think it is. I mean, nah. how, how well did Halo 1 for the PC do? I don't think it did that well. Well, uh, consider, look at the list of the top games last year, and they were all Sims games and World of Warcraft. So, for a while now, um, they've been planning on getting rid of analog television. You know, when you stick the antenna on your roof and you just watch Channel 3, 4, and 5 with an old TV. And... There's been fights, and they keep changing the date when they're going to cut it off, and all kinds of crap. Today, the President Bush signed a law, so this is set in stone, it's a law, for real. On February 17th, 2009, they're That's going... That's so far into the future, I don't even give a shit. They're going to turn off all the analog television. That, that information is almost useless to anyone. Yeah. No one cares. Well, all the people who plan on using antennas in 2009 do. No, nah, because they don't even know, and they won't know. They won't know until their TV stops working. Yeah, and you know what? That's fine. This is, I mean, this is an issue that I really don't care about at all. That could be because we don't watch TV. Yeah, exactly, but think about it. Most people who watch TV in this country have cable, because there's really nothing else Or out satellite. There. Yeah. They have some sort of pay service that'll continue to work no matter what. 
This only screws the poorest of the poor who probably shouldn't be watching TV anyway. But that's the problem is the people who watch the most TV are the poorest of the poor because they have no jobs and they sit um, at home all day. You'd be surprised because all the a lot of people who work or have jobs or in fact just most people in this country just watch a lot of TV. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they sure do. But the point is, is that the those people watch TV when they get home from work when they wake up in the morning and on the weekend. The poor people watch TV all day. That's why you see all those, you know cheap, really low-class talk shows on during the, you know, late morning, afternoon times, because that's when all the poor people are watching. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what Yeah, a way about. to uh, paint poor people with a broad brush. A little, little bit of a broad brush there, you know, uh, painting them with it. Uh, it's mostly accurate eh. in, in America, at least. See, the thing is, I'd be, I'm all for this. I wish it happened sooner, because maybe it'll force people, when they can't watch their TV anymore, to do something else for a little while. Yeah, they'd have to get a job in order to buy a digital uh, television. Well, no, because you know the government's going to subsidize uh, upgrades for everyone. Doesn't say that here. Yeah, but the government's already said they will. They've earmarked a whole ton of money. A lot of the money that's going to come from the sale of the spectrum that TV is currently on is going to go towards subsidizing digital converter boxes for everyone in the country who needs them so that people will still be able to watch TV. We'll see about that because you know what? I'm going to go get me a digital converter box and do some nice hacks with it because it's, hey, free electronics. I'll take it. Uh, they're going to subsidize it. It won't be free. You'll just get like a rebate if you buy it or something. Fine. Cheap electronics. Great. What are you going to do with that? You'll be able to watch TV. Woot. I'll be able to do some other stuff with it. Like what? You, don't, you can barely solder. It's a digital analog converter. Uh, yeah, what are you going to do with this specific piece of technology that is made to do one specific thing? I don't know, but Make Magazine will tell me. Yeah, I, I I don't think I've seen you in the history of me knowing you so much as touch a soldering iron. I know how to use one. Yeah. I made a burglar alarm like a few years ago. A few years ago? Yeah. A few years ago you were still living with me and I didn't see any burglar alarm. More than More than a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking what, high school? No, 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 no. Talking oh, middle wait, school? Maybe. Middle school maybe? Maybe high school. Maybe high school, yeah. Still, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Plus, you realize that this, these boxes are not going to be simple pieces of electronics. They're going to be mostly digital. It's not like the projects... That's why they're going to be totally worth the low price plus the uh It's not subsidy. like the projects you do in school where, you know, you make an oscillator and there's a giant resistor and a giant capacitor and big wires between them and you can see where everything's going. It's probably mostly pre-printed boards and pre-printed chips. There'll be some sort of firmware hack, and then I'll get my computer to do something, and then... Name I... anything you think you could use a DAC for. I don't know. Some sort of awesome Myth TV hack or something. No, you don't need that. The, the, the... <laughs> I, I'd be able to pick up the digital t the HD TV out of the sky and write it to my hard drive with an analog... You know, there's not g one, there's not going to be so much HD TV in the sky to begin with, especially not where we live. Why not? There, you realize, I, I, we don't have an antenna, but I talk to people at work, and because of the mountains where we live, there are maybe two channels that you can get over the air currently. Aren't there any uh, TV station, local TV stations here? No. Like a Poughkeepsie TV station? Yeah, we don't get it. Wow. Apparently, there's almost no watchable television over the airwaves here. Wow, even in Rochester, there was a TV station, like, right there. Yeah, but your grand total, even if we had an antenna in Rochester, there were only a few channels. I guess I kind of spoiled, because where I'm from, we got, you know, two whole states' worth of TV channels hey, over the air. where I was from in Michigan, we got about 20 channels just over the air. Oh, yeah, we had, like, a zillion over-the-air channels. We didn't even switch to cable for the longest time, because we didn't need to. Thing is, I remember as a kid watching more Canadian TV than American TV. Yeah, we didn't get Canadian TV, but I watched mostly New York TV. Canadian TV as was freaking awesome. As there opposed were, to Connecticut. You realize, TV. instead of Saturday morning cartoons, there's this one Canadian channel, Channel 9. It was Saturday morning Learn Science. Mm -hmm. I remember watching all these just shows that, like, remember Mr. Wizard? Yep. These shows make Mr. Wizard look like crap. These shows Mr. were like, Wizard here's was science. was kind of crappy. Like, I remember one specifically, it was this guy, and he was just lecturing on Bernoulli's principle and how it worked and how airfoils work. And it was an hour long, and I was like six, and I just ate that crap up. Alrighty. Yeah. Maybe that's why Canadians have fewer uh, issues than we do down here. They still have their issues. Oh, yeah, they have their issues. But you know what? At least they debate their issues. 
I guess. In open forums. They may not come to the, to good solutions, but at least they try. Uh, supposedly. At least they have a facade of trying. If yeah. anything. We don't even have that. So, things of the day. You all know and love Spider-Man from his various movie, comic, and book appearances in the U.S. Spider-Man. But Spider-Man has another incarnation. A giant robot fighting incarnation. This can only be Japanese. Yeah, Japan made its own Spider-Man, and here it is. Our friend Kate pointed us to this, and oh my god. At first I thought it was just the 1960s live-action American Spider-Man TV show dubbed in Japanese and made funny. See, I don't know how you can think that, because it starts immediately with you know, various Japanese things that are obviously Japanese. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention so much. I just saw a live-action Spider-Man dancing around. But then, when you get to the giant robots and stuff, and the plot doesn't match the plot of Spider-Man in any way whatsoever... But there's a scene where the giant robot has got Spider-Man from a web, and he's swinging him around. It's not even a web, it's a rope. And then he just whaps him into a tree as hard a as he can. It's a mountain. He smacks him into a mountain. It's insane. And then Spider-Man just gets up. It's, it's oh my god, this is worth watching. The subtitles are all fake as far as we can tell. Yeah, the well, subtitles fake, are like... But many parts of the subtitles seem very inaccurate. Well, it seems like some parts were relatively accurate, or at least kind of make sense, even if they're not accurate. But other parts are just made silly on purpose, which is, I say it's better because you don't really want to know what they're saying. It might be painful. Actually reminds me of a story... Uh, my brother's friend had a job dressing up as Spider-Man and going to kids' birthday parties. Wow, that sounds kind of creepy and shady. It's actually apparently like Spider-Man was like the number one thing to have at your birthday party or something. Hey there, big boy! Yeah, I don't think it was like that. But then he got fired for not showing up. What? <laughs> it, I, was, it was hilarious. Well, getting fired from a job like that is, yeah. Yeah, and there was another story about a guy who had the same job and he had a bunch of dreadlocks. But then, you know, he would go to get the money from the parents and he would take the mask off and all these dreadlocks would come out and they'd be like, whoa, whatever. That's it? Yeah. That story didn't go anywhere. No, it was just a dreadlock. The dreadlocks didn't kill anyone. The dreadlocks really didn't matter. No. Why even tell that story? Because they're hit. It doesn't look like he has them when he puts the Spider-Man mask on and then poof. Uh, And you go, whoa, look who's on the Spider-Man. They just kind of go whoop and disappear if you don't want them out. It's kind of like a little secret identity thing going on, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, so... Today, what are we going to do our show on? Uh, don't you have a thing of the day? Yeah, and it has to do with the thing we're going to do our show on today. Oh, yeah, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, so... Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, Cthulhu Photogen and such. Yeah, we got a little uh, Lovecraftian thing of the day. Someone took a bunch of Legos, and they made this... You can't call them Legos, you can't call them Legos. Someone took many Lego. Lego toys. Yep. At Lego bricks. Bricks. Lego bricks. And... But they're not all bricks. Some uh, of them are round. You're right. Anyway, they took a whole bunch of them and they made this giant scene that is all Call of Cthulhu action. They've got little, like a biplane. They've got... Uh, well, it's not really like canon from the books Call of Cthulhu action. It is definitely playing the Cthulhu game action. Yeah, it's definitely Call of Cthulhu, the RPG action. A bunch of guys from the 30s with various crap pistols and Tommy yeah. guns going after... Uh, treasure on an island and Cthulhu comes and eats them. Yeah, there's there's tentacles coming out of the water, there's deep ones, there's boats, there's cars and Indiana Joneses and it's really cool. This is Zeppelin. It's it's like you look at this and you could use this as like your representation for when you play the game, you know, with uh, your friends. Word. I just really enjoy looking at all the different like parts of it. Like, there's the one people picking mushrooms, and uh, these other people near the phone booth, or whatever the hell it is. There's the one guy who was, like, the tentacle going into him, with this, like, they used a red bush, and the the red bush actually looks like blood, because they stuck it on his chest, so it looks like the blood is just exploding out of his stomach, because <laughs> the tentacle hit him in the back. Here, look. I can see. Okay. And there's a skull on the ground. <laughs> it's all, all the little details of it that make it great. Yeah, peruse it in detail, much like the uh, pictures of Mexico City. So, yeah, I wasn't lying. Our show today is about Lego 
Because basically we were doing that show on the toys of our geeky, you know, nerd fest lives of children. And we realized that there's much more to that topic than we could do in one show. Yeah, so Lego, which is like this major toy in everyone's life. At least uh, every geeky kid's life. There were a lot of kids where I grew up who didn't have any Lego or thought they were stupid. None? Wow. Yeah. Everyone I knew at least had some Lego, if not much. I had an extensive collection. See, I was big into the castle Lego. And whenever we went to Toys R Us, we either got an NES game or Lego. So or yeah, both. Start, I started out real big with the uh, real life sets, like the race car type stuff. Like we race had a, car we had and a pit little stop. race car set that came with two little race cars in the track. That was a good one. Yep, that or any just like normal buildings and stuff, like and the, of course just big blocks and boxes, like the houses and the and the trees and yep, yep. The little town people. Yeah, we weren't big into those sets. I think we had two of them. Mostly, I had castle sets: Knigget's, wizards, dragons, castles, castles, catapults, castles. Yeah, I only had one castle, and then I had some knockoff, not Lego, but kind of compatible with Lego castle. Oh. Uh. And I had mostly the space stuff. I remember when the Ice Planet came out. I got all that. Yeah, the Ice Planet was wicked cool because they had those orange chainsaws and stuff. It had the orange jemmies. Yeah, but I only got actually one... Uh, oh, I got the freaking base. I got only one Snow Planet thing, which was this one guy who had a chainsaw and like a snowmobile. It was actually really fun. But I had that guy, but I also had the full-on base and like the big magnetic thing and the My arms. brother had all the space stuff. He had like two snow bases and a snow a spaceship and whatever. But I was mostly into the castle. I, I think actually, the best part of the, the ice planet stuff was that all the little sleddy things had the little sleds, and they worked really well on carpet. Mm-hmm. But I got the bright idea one day. This is where all the guys had skis, too. Yeah. I uh, went outside into the snow in our front yard with my brother. Let me tell you, that was one of the best days of playing with Lego I ever had. Until you lost all your white Legos in the snow. Actually, I lost almost nothing. I was real careful. Almost nothing. And you know what? I found the rest in the spring. <laughs> Before the lawnmower got them? <laughs> you don't mow the lawn for quite some time after the snow melts. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, actually, when I got the castle stuff, we, I mostly got... They had... In those days, it was the knights, which were like actual guys with black castles and armor and swords and things. Yep. And then you had this Robin Hood set, which was like these guys who were all elfish. They weren't elves, but they were like forest rangers. They it was, had, there was definitely some uh, animosity between these two groups. Yeah, they, had, they, all, where they were all green, and they had hats, and you could change the feathers in the hats. And I had feathers of every color, and I would... You could tell the rank of the guy based on how big his feather was <laughs> and what color it was. So the guy with, like, the triple white feather was, like, Robin Hood. And every, like, Little John had, like, the triple red feather. And the people with, like, the single tiny little white, you know, like, blue feathers, those were normal schmucks. And they had bows and arrows and quivers and, you know, all kinds of great stuff. They even had this giant castle with a trap, with a, with a portcullis that opened and closed with a rope. Uh, I never had their castle. I just had all their guys. Yeah, I had all. I had their castle. I had their. Uh, the best set was the one where there was a river and this bridge that went over the river, and there were like little towers on either end of it. Ooh, that was a good one. Yeah, and then I would set that up, and then I would set the castles up on the other side, and then the horses would march at each other and shoot arrows and, nah. you know, that sort of thing. Yep, I had kind of epic battles with my little brother and me, and we'd build. Each of us had like pretty much identical sets of Legos. And we'd build giant, like, giant, giant freaking complex bases for all our guys. And every now and then we'd agree and we'd just kind of have this ongoing kind of war. Mm. I mean, we, had, war. we came up with little, you know, little kids like Calvin Ball type rules where, like, he put a door in the front. So I was like, I walk in. And then he put a thing. He's like, ah, now it's locked. And it really was locked. So crap, now my guy can't get in. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. We had this whole currency system where various pieces were worth more or less money or value, depending how rare they were. You like, can you know, tell the story of the uh, space shuttle? Yeah, I can tell the story of the space shuttle. All but right. you know, like, there were little gold pieces from the pirate set? Mm -hmm. I had one tiny set of the gold between us. So those are like the rarest, like a piece of gold was worth like a million normal pieces. Yeah, the pirates are some of the best ones, actually. I had one pirate tower that was like this island with a tower on it and some guys with guns. They weren't actually pirates. They were the anti-pirates. And I, I planned to get pirates, but I always just bought castles instead. I don't know. <laughs> I like the pirates. I'd go to the store and you see like a pirate ship. 
And then I'd, but I'd be like, ooh, a pirate ship. But then I would see a giant castle. I'd be like, ooh, giant castle. One thing I had, though, I didn't have the pirate ship, but there was a big red boat that was like a barge. And you could, it was a Lego thing, and you could put Legos in it and make various types of boats. It also actually floated. Yeah, I had a white uh, speedboat that was like six inches long and four inches tall. I always wanted that, but I never had it. I had the giant red boat that was like a foot and a half long. Yeah, and you could just... Put, build any kind of boat on top of it, and then it actually had a little slot if you got the motor. I don't yep, know. the motor that no one I knew ever had. I don't know how you got the motor. I didn't see it for sale anywhere, but if you got it, you could attach it to this boat, and it would go around, but as long as you didn't weigh this down with a piece of metal, it would float. Yeah, we did it. Once I made a boat that had a big tower in it, and then it tipped over and filled with water and sank. Uh... But I, we used to play in the pool, actually. We had a, an above-ground pool in our backyard. I'd take that thing out there, and we'd have guys swimming around in the water and fighting with each other. It was awesome. Yeah, we we put it in the pool once, but it uh, didn't last very long. When I was real, real little, we used to take it in the bathtub with me constantly. Uh, it was one of my first Legos. Oh, man, I could talk forever about my bathtub toys when I was a real little kid. <laughs> Just get, I'll, I'll stick with two words, Mr. Bubble. Uh, Mr. Bubble's overrated. You suck. I'm going to buy some. What are you going to do about that? Uh, yeah, you go ahead and take a bath in our bathroom. You just you do that. Maybe I will. Okay. That means you'll have to clean it. Maybe. <laughs> All right, anyway. Yeah, later. we're not going to do a show on bathroom toys because that's not very geek specific. Every kid had that sort of toy. Yeah. Yeah. Bathroom toys? Ew. Okay. Well, I consider my DS a bathroom toy. I'll often play the DS while I'm sitting in there doing my various... Uh, leaningings of my body. So Lego. Yeah, Lego. All right. So this current, like my brother, like the gold pieces were rare. And we had, you know, there was a briefcase that came with one set that snapped open. You could fit some gold pieces in it. That was like the most powerful, rare, awesome thing because there was only one. We always figured that there were like the nuclear secrets in it or whatever. All right. I never saw that. Yeah, I don't know what set it came in. We had one. Okay. And the best thing is, you know the little jammy pieces? Like, there's the like the yellow ones and the clear ones for headlights and, like, the various different ones. You used them for various yeah, things. Yeah, because originally uh, the yellow ones were used as gold, and I would take a treasure chest, and I would just dump a bunch of those in there. And then eventually when the pirate sets came out, they actually had these little flat gold pieces with numbers on them, which is different. Yep. All I remember is that we, we'd assign various, because the gems were also energy. Like, if you wanted to make a laser gun, you had to have the jemmy things on it. Or if you wanted to have whatever. I mean, I had various laser security systems being a geeky little kid. But the orange ones from the Ice Planet set were the most powerful, because they were the rarest, because we had the fewest of them. Mm-hmm. And I remember I took the freaking, you know the Ice Planet had that giant orange shield thing over it? Yeah, yep. I used that. I put it around my base, and oh man, that was just nuts. Mm-hmm. I remember my brother had a space set with a giant blue shield. Oh, I never had that set. There was also a set with because there was there were three space sets. The Ice Planet set came much later. Yeah, this was like a research dome that had this thing had came with like two vehicles that would drive around picking stuff up, and it came with a ship that oh he had a separate set that was a robot, but its head would fly off as a ship. Yeah, I never had that one. It was like a Tidarian shuttle type of ship. See, I remember that there were two different sets of space guys. There were the guys who were like all, they were all like blackish and they had the yellow shields. And no, the yellow this jammies. wasn't it. And there were the other guys that had the bluish jammies and the bluish shields. Yeah, this is the bluish guys. with the I white, think those were the good they guys. They were all white ships with blue translucent stuff. That was Those, are, I think, were the main space guys. Yeah. I forget what they actually called this stuff. They actually had names for it all. Yeah, I never knew it even as a kid. Yeah. We just kind of mishmashed everything together. I mean, when our guys would fight, you know, they'd run into each other, and my brother and I would do a battle. Some guys would have swords, some guys would have muskets, some guys would have laser guns, whatever. Yeah. What's up? Lego, all of the different Lego sets seem to have this plot and this universe, you know, sort of like a campaign setting. But they never explain any of it to you, and there's no way to find out about it. You know what? That's good, because there's just enough there. Kids, as kids, we were cognizant of the fact that there were these different clans of Lego guys, and that there was some sort of conflict between them. And our fertile minds created the rest of it. Yeah, even today, they have, what, like, the Bionicle or whatever? And there's uh, something to it, but I have no idea what the hell it is. You know, what's the story of Bionicle? There's these guys. They're Bionicles. See, I remember I had the story of the Ice Planet was a harsh and unforgiving place, and my Lego men were trying to survive in the face of adversity. Oh, but see, someone would always screw up, ice... and the reactor would break, and then they I always die. thought the story of the Ice Planet was that uh, normal space guys wanted to do some research there, 
and but it was very harsh. So they had to uh, you know build bases and do terrible things like sort of like Antarctica. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I played different things all the time. And the story of the castles was that the Robin Hood guys were fighting against the evil monarchy, which was all dark and evil, had wizards and witches and things, and the Robin Hood guys were all valiant and such. I remember the -the glow-in-the-dark ghost. Oh my god, the -the glow-in-the-dark ghost. I had like two or three glow-in-the-dark ghosts, because I got the tiny $5 glow-in-the-dark ghost set, then I got a big castle with a glow-in-the-dark ghost in it, and I got something else with the ghost, but he was awesome. Now, it seems that Lego was very defined, like things click in in very rigid ways. But I seem to recall that almost every kid came upon a number of innovations or discoveries regarding Lego pieces. And it seems that these discoveries are universal among children who are geeks. The first I remember is that if men were fighting with swords or spears or whatnot, you could always kind of crack the guy's abdomen open a little bit and stick the sword in him and then leave him there dead with the sword sticking out of his back. Yep. Every kid did that. I or, you know, did. you'd have the guy laying there dead, you'd pull his hand out, still clutching the sword, and put it in front of him. Mm-hmm. The one thing I remember really big was I captured one of my little brother's guys once, and he wouldn't pay the ransom. So what I did is I executed him. You know the whip, the green whip? Mm-hmm. I used that as a hangman's noose, and I made a gallows, and I put it around the guy's neck, and I hung him from my battlements. Yeah, see, I usually use those whips, not as whips, but uh, the uh, forest men, the Robin Hood type of guys, they always had this green greenery in all their um, buildings to make it look like trees and stuff. Yep. And I would put these as vines hanging from the trees, and guys would do sort of a Tarzan thing with them Ah. Oh. to get around. I really only used them as hangman's nooses, though. I remember when I was young, my mother yelling at me for doing something so horrible. Yeah. Uh, my mom didn't really pay attention to what I made. Yeah. Like <laughs> well, she did because we were real young, and I remember my brother crying that I killed one of his guys. Yeah. So Legos today really aren't the same as they were when we were uh, playing with them. No, there seem to be so many specialized pieces. Yeah, it's like back in the day when I made these castles and things, I made them mostly, like 90%, out of just Lego bricks. Occasionally there'd be a weird piece, like the things with a little window in them, but you get a whole bunch of those, and that became like a standard piece for castles. It was like a yeah. castle piece. Like, I remember getting airplanes, and they were just, it was all just normal pieces. There was nothing special to them at all. Mm-hmm. Eventually, now, all the sets I'd bought became cannibalized into this giant mishmash of pieces. Yeah, nowadays, when you buy a set, it's like, it's all, there's like, there's like barely any normal Lego bricks in there, and it's all like specialized pieces that are used to make specifically that thing. Well, I think part of the problem is that Legos last forever. You can't freaking destroy the things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think maybe of all the Lego pieces I've ever had, one got destroyed because our dog ate it, and then when he pooped it out, no one wanted to touch it. I think we definitely destroyed one uh, Lego piece. Or two. But uh, not, we that, broke it, like, uh, some of the little things, like a sword would break or a spear would get Sometimes when half. some piece got stuck somewhere and you couldn't separate it, we would, like, hammer at it or something. And oh, then didn't you have the separate thing? We from got Lego? the separate thing, but... I some, never was unable to separate two pieces. Sometimes we were unable to separate something from, like, the baseboard. If what? there was some, If there was some hot and cold involved. Baseboard? That was cake. I never had, I never ruined a baseboard. No, we didn't ruin the baseboard. We ruined a piece attached to it. Uh, but, but even so, 99% of Lego pieces last forever. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. I still got all my... I should bring them here for fun. I want mine here. As soon as I go to Arizona, I'm, have, I'm shipping them all back to myself. Well, next time I go to my house and put them all in my car. Oh, uh, you know, you realize if we get Lego, that's the end of the podcast, because that's the end of video games, that's the end of everything. There's going to be at least a week of us just playing with Legos. I'll have to get the instructions how to build all my castle sets again. I'm totally going to build the most gigantic empire of death you could imagine. Mm, maybe I'll go buy a new Lego. Of course, I can't buy a castle, real castle Legos anymore. But because they're so enduring, it seems like in order to maintain the market of selling more Lego, because parents can just keep passing their Legos on to their kids forever, they keep coming out with these new sets with more and more specialized pieces that you can't get any other way. Yeah, I do like some of the new sets, though. Like the Star Wars ones are always good. Yeah, they're all right. They still have a lot of pieces that just really only work in those one specific guys. Yeah. I don't like that at all. Like, uh, you know, what's it called? Like, the front of a spaceship will be, uh, like, this pointy bit. And it's like, come on, that pointy bit's not useful for anything. It's only useful for the fronts of spaceships. That's all that is. I mean, even because in the war between me and my brother, it finally ended when one day I put together $70 and bought the U.S. space shuttle set. 
Was, was it the Columbia or the what? What was it? I don't know. Challenger. All I know is it was huge, and like it had. It wasn't. It was the space shuttle and all the pieces, like all the part bits of it, the solid rocket bo- boosters and the liquid tank, mm-hmm. and it was a baseboard, and it was the entire like tower and the thing that held it up and all these little wiry rope things. They to have pull a little tank. Up to it. The, the the launch pad that drives around like a tank. Uh, that's the only thing it didn't have. Oh. It had everything else. All right. It was awesome. And you know what? There was not a single specialized piece in that whole thing. Mm. The entire space shuttle and everything was created entirely with normal Lego bricks. It didn't have, like, just, you know, a solid rocket booster that was one piece? No, the solid rocket booster was made with, you know, the, the four, the four by one, the two by two by one Lego pieces that were cylinders. Oh my god, that's awesome. It was made with just a whole ton of them. Yeah. Awesome. And then at the top, there was one of the Coney ones that goes into a one at the top, and then you stuck a normal, uh, I don't know what to call it, they're little cone things. Yep, I know Not what the cylinders, about. but it was a cylinder, but it coned out. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, those went in the top. Great. The whole thing was just normal pieces. So the what about the middle liquid uh, fuel tank thing? I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly, it was just a bigger cylinder thing that you still had to put together. Oh, I've never seen a cylinder that big. That'd be interesting. I forget exactly how it was made. I've got the pieces. So. Yeah, I'd like to see those pieces. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the only close thing is that in the big red uh, tower that held it up, there were a few, like, you know, the castle pieces with the window in them? Yep. There were some pieces that were, that were of that type, but they were more like... Uh, buttressing or like just fortification type stuff Mm -hmm. but other than that it was just regular pieces wow see nowadays you would get a solid rocket booster piece and a fuel tank piece and like shuttle door pieces you know what if i got something like that why don't i just buy a model of a space shuttle it's not legos yeah i know i don't i just don't i mean freaking the doors on the shuttle were normal lego pieces that you could even find in other sets with the little hinges and everything like my brother has a lego x-wing right the four wings are like these wing pieces. Ah. Uh, it's just like these big triangular flat Legos, and it's like... That's so terrible. Couldn't they make some sort of, you know, something... If they, I think the problem is that if you don't make a piece like that, that you have to make it bigger and thus more expensive with more plastic. Yeah, which I was fine with. I remember Lego cost more than Nintendo games most of the time. Yeah, I mean, the giant... I never had the biggest castle of them all, even though I wanted it, because it was a hundred bucks. Yeah, I wanted the monorail more than anything when I was a little kid. No one ever got the monorail. No, I never you knew always saw it in that little Lego catalog. Uh, Lego catalog, whenever you bought Legos, you got it. Yep, like, and you'd always stare at that monorail like, oh my god, I'd be the coolest kid ever. This would be the most awesome thing in the world. Yeah, you'd always look through there and you'd be like, oh, look at set number 6421. That's the greatest ever. Oh, look, you can buy a set of guys and they come with all those extra items that I don't have. You I know? remember on Christmas time, time, I'd always take the catalog and circle all the things I wanted and give it to my parents. Yeah, I remember. But I'd do- circle almost everything. I remember doing that, but I remember not getting really anything from the catalog ever. Yeah. Once I wrote a letter to Lego and I told them to, they should make a set that was army guys, like tanks and stuff. And they said, yeah, that's great. They sent me a letter back and that, that was it. <laughs> But I'm surprised they don't make uh, Army Guys Lego. You know what? Definitely, let's get our Lego and uh, play with them and then put pictures online of what we've done. Yeah, we definitely got to make cool Cthulhus with them. Because just imagining it now, I really have this urge to play with some Lego. Yeah, me too. Like, badly. I I have an urge to play with Lego that's stronger than my urge to play with any piece of entertainment or video game or anything that I currently own. I really hope that all our... uh, I think this podcast will be considered successful... If all our listeners have the same, I want to play with Lego Urge and have no Legos available. So you know what? Once we get our Lego shipped out here, uh, if any of you live nearby, we'll totally hang out and play with Lego. Woohoo! I got dibs on uh, all the horses. Horses, whatever. <laughs> I don't need no stinking horses. I'll what? shoot them with my laser guns and my lightsabers. Ah, uh, good thing my horses are made of plastic. They won't die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably enough about Lego. If I talk about him anymore, I'm just going to go nuts because I don't have any to play with. I agree. So in uh, podcast news. Yeah, some meta bits. Yeah, the the podcast reviewer, who is this guy who I guess has a podcast of reviewing podcasts. I've listened to him a couple times. He's all right. Um, I found out about him, and I asked him to review us. And to my surprise, he actually reviewed us, which was kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh, he didn't really say that much about us. I think he was a little, a little sick and a little tired, you know, recently in his life. So I can't really blame him. 
Yeah, I've been tired for the last couple of weeks, so I've been a little off, and your banter hasn't been the greatest lately, but we're just tired. Yeah. Our lives are busy. Very busy. But he reviewed us. He said what I consider to be mostly compliments. Um, but one thing he wanted was there to be separate feeds for separate days. You know, people who are only interested in anime only want to listen on Wednesday, and people only interested in games want to listen on Tuesday only. So uh, little did he know that WordPress, which is what our site runs on, already has this set up. But uh, I just didn't make nice, easy links for everyone to use because I was going to wait until we had the new theme ready. Yep, because we're working on that. Yep. And we'd actually come up with the idea way back, we were going to just do it for the anime one, when we realized that, I mean, we do four podcasts a week, which the more we're learning is that that's insane. It is. Very like, few people do this, man. That's fucking many. insane, and no one does that. Like, once a week is even a lot. Yeah, most people record much, much less podcasts than we do. So our one day a week of anime is more anime podcasting than most anime podcasts out there. Yep. So we were thinking we were going to make a separate feed burner feed and everything for Geek Nights Anime and market it separately. Mm-hmm. Even though we haven't done any marketing at all yet. Everyone no. who listens is just all word of mouth, which is cool. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I made a post on you know frontrowcrew.com. You can see it right up there at the top. Well, I guess now it'll, if once we post this podcast, it'll be the second one down. And it has links to the raw, uh, not so clean, but fully functional... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, separate podcast feeds. I'd hold off on subscribing to them since sometime soon we're going to set up real feed burner nice feeds for them. Well, they'll, they'll work, and they'll work forever just fine, but they won't have all the meta information properly, like um, the, the name, name of the episode, the name of the show, what track. Well, they'll have the track number. That's some of it, some of it will be there, and some of it won't be. I just, I can't tell you what will be there and what won't be, but it won't so be you, clean. Use these at your own peril. Yeah, it'll work. I guarantee it'll work just fine. You'll download the MP3s and listen to them. You just won't have all the correct information surrounding them. Though the thing is, I think all the people who currently listen. Probably just, I mean, if they're not interested in anime, they probably listen to the first half of Anime Day, and then they tune out when we start talking about the anime. Mm-hmm. I mean, we really, we strive to have some sort of common geekery every day. That's why we do the news and things of the day. Yep. And then we delve into the specifics, so people who aren't interested in one topic can just tune out whenever they want. Yeah. But it seems like everyone who's listening really wants to listen to every one of them. I don't know. Uh, some people have expressed a desire to only listen one day, so... I'll let those people, they can do as they wish. And Plus the nice now, thing, uh, five once I, if I set up the feed burners, that's why I want to do that, I'll get nice statistics on how many people and who are listening to what, so we'll know what bits are popular, and it'll give us a lot of good data to figure out how we can make the show better. Yeah, that is uh, an, one important thing. But for now, if you really, really just want to listen to one of the days of the week or a couple of them, there are separate feeds. I made links. You can use those until later when we have the more official now, of course, if you listen to most or all of them or anything, just subscribe to the main one. Don't bother subscribing to all of these. It yeah, won't help you. Yeah, that's just silly. This is really only for someone who really only wants to listen to our Monday podcast. Or Tuesday. Or Wednesday. Or Friday. Oh, wait, we don't do Friday. Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we did Friday, if we did full five days a week, we'd probably die. I, do, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be dead. <laughs> There'd be like this tombstone and a picture of it, and that's uh, all that would be on the website. Though I got to say, we're getting a lot better at this. I mean, we've pretty much gotten down all our ways of interviewing people or online or over the phone, whatever. Though we're trying out some more software. Yeah, we could use a little more interviewing experience, I think. But Yeah, well, someone's recommended to us, because Skype doesn't let you record automatically, this gizmo voice over IP, which apparently is awesome. We'll try it. I think Google Talk might be a good thing to try out also. Yes. Because it's going to be in the next version of GAM, and... The really the best way ever is to use an asterisk PBX, but we don't have a. Well, the best phone way ever is to do it in person. Oh, of course, of course. But the best telephone way. Of course. Way, the best telephone way is to use an asterisk PBX, but we don't have one. So. Yeah, though I got to say, I'm pleased with the fact that we're getting better at this. Yep. I mean, when we first started doing the show. Well, when we first first did the show, the beta out, like, episodes that are unaired, not on the internet, unless you know where to look for them, maybe we'll release them someday as a, yeah, we used to sound like this. But they were recorded with a crap microphone in the middle of the room and us yelling on either side of it. Like, literally. They're uh, terrible. Those are the days. Half of it is us arguing with each other about what to say. 
Awesome. But once we really, like, once we actually started doing episodes, after we got the mixer and the microphones and everything, it took about an hour and a half to do post-production on a given episode. Now, it takes about a half hour, and most of that time is waiting for my crap-ass slow computer to finish processing my filters. Uh, uh, that crap-ass slow computer with the video card broke today. Yeah, oh my god, I didn't even mention it in my, me- in my meta bits, or my uh, leader bits, but... I came home from work today, and you know what? I'll save this for tomorrow. All right. So if you want to hear what happened to my computer, because it's kind of hilarious, uh, tune in tomorrow. Or, oh, wait, it's Thursday. Tune in on Monday. Tune in Monday for the tale of the screwed up video card. Hopefully by then I'll have a new video card. And the tale of Ubercon. Yeah, Ubercon. That's right. We, we definitely got to mention that. It'll be on the site, but Saturday we're going to be at Ubercon in New Jersey. If yep. you want to see us and play games, show up. We're not hard to spot. I'm not kidding. Just look for us. We're kind of obvious. I think so. Well, we're loud, annoying geeks who stand at the center of attention, shouting about board games and yelling at each other. Ah. Uh, uh. Ha <laughs> ha. And that was Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for our opening theme. Be sure to visit our website at www.frontrowcrew.com. If you like our podcasts, you'll love our forums. Make sure you visit them. You can send your email feedback to geeknights at gmail.com. And if you want, you can leave us a voicemail at 206-333-1537. Geek Nights airs every weeknight, Monday through Thursday. Geek Nights is recorded with absolutely no studio and no audience. But unlike those other talk shows... It's actually recorded at night.